Let us go into the house of the Lord. Come on, I wish somebody would lift up a shout, a hallelujah praise in here. Has God been good to anybody? I said, has God, my God, any wonderful? Don't hold it down, hallelujah. Hallelujah, he's brought me from a mighty, mighty, mighty long way. Welcome to Brookland Baptist Church. We are so honored that you decided to worship with us. We are so grateful that we are in the sanctuary and not in the cemetery. Anybody glad to be alive today? I said, is anybody glad to be alive today? My God, he woke us up in our right minds. You were able to...
able to drive yourself to church this morning. You put your own clothes on. You were able to feed yourself. Somebody got a reason to give God praise in here today. Come on, open up your mouth and let the devil know he's still a liar and a loser. That I made it to the house of God to give God glory and honor and praise. Again, welcome to Brooklyn Baptist Church. We're honored that you decided to worship with us on our stream. Please share the stream with your family and with your friends and let them know we are about to have a Holy Ghost party in here today. I said we're about to have a Holy Ghost good time in the Lord's house today. Come on, let's give God one more praise. Come on. Somebody lift up your voice and shout hallelujah. Come on, shout hallelujah. Come on, tell God thank you. He's been wonderful. Hallelujah. On today, it is my honor and my privilege to have our esteemed guest with us, our guest worship leader. On today is none other than the Prince of Praise, the incomparable Byron Cage. Come on, put your hands together for him, Brooklyn. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Listen, y'all, this is the first congregation I've stood in front of on a Sunday morning where there were people in the pews. I said, praise. seeing the saints of Zion and I just feel like giving God glory this morning. If you have breath in your body, I wonder can you give God some crazy praise this morning. Come on. Come on, open up your mouth and give it to him. God, you deserve the hallelujah. You deserve the thank you, Jesus. In the midst of the pandemic, you've kept us, God. In the midst of COVID-19, you sustaining us. In the midst of racism, you're keeping us, God. We bless your name. We honor you right now. Tell somebody next to you, say, neighbor, that's why I can't give up. Come on, look behind you, tell them, no matter what the news says, I can't give up. I won't give in. I won't turn back because I'm built. I'm ready. I'm built to win. Tell somebody next to you, I'm built to win. Come on. Come on. Come on, clap your hands like this. Put that in the monitor for us this morning. Come on, clap your hands, somebody. We're here to have church and to bless the name of Jesus. Come on, say it, y'all. Say it. I can't give up. Come on, sing it. I can't give up. I can't give in. Listen, I'm not going to give in. I won't turn back. I, I won't turn back. I won't turn back. I'm built to win. How many know you're built to win? Say it again. I can't give, I can't give up. Come on, say it, y'all. I can't give in. I can't give in. Come on, tell somebody. I'm built. I'm built listen, listen, say this all through the trial. There's still a race. This Sunday morning, y'all say it. I can't give up. Uh -huh. Come on, say it to him. Come on, sing. I can't. Clap your hands if you're not going to give up. Let's say it again. Shall prosper. Come on, tend to sit like this. Although the trials, they often come. But there's still a race. Can't give up. I can't give up. I can't give up. Can't give up. Come on, I'm not gonna do it today. I said, oh. Come on, say never, y'all. Never will I worry or complain. situation of the storm the political crisis what's happening in America he's keeping me in the midst of it come on say it say it's keep you keeping me alive for a reason Jesus COVID-19 did not take me out 
over here. Come on. But you keep doing it. See. Come on. How are we going to always keep you alive for a reason? Come on. Come on. Say it's by your mercy, your grace. Because of your provision and your faithfulness, Jesus. for you. Come on, clap your hands. Come on. Come on, clap your hands. Come on, give him praise. Come on, give him the thanksgiving. If you know you're here because of the grace, the grace and the mercy of God that you've not been pursued. Come on, but God, you've been faithful to us, Jesus. Hallelujah. If you're glad to be alive here, you are alive, aren't you? Come on, y'all, let's say it again. Say, say he's keeping me. Clap your hands and he's keeping it. 
Good morning, Brooklyn. For all those who are able to stand, we're going to ask you to stand for prayer, please. Must Jesus bear the cross alone and all the world go free? No, there's a cross for everyone, and there's a cross for me. Most holy and everlasting thou art God. We pause at this place just to say thank you. God, we come right now to say thank you for grace, and God, we thank you for mercy. It's not that we've been so good that we're still here, but God, we thank you for being a God of a second chance. God, we thank you for standing here at the Brooklyn Baptist Church the first Sunday in February of the year of 2022. God, we know 2020, 2021, we have seen some things that we've never seen before. But God, we know the God that we serve still will provide. And for that, we say thank you. Heavenly Father, we come right now inviting you into this service. Heavenly Father, that you may have this service to be what you desire to be. Holy Spirit, come right now. Holy Spirit, come into this service. Heavenly Father, somebody needs you right now. Heavenly Father, somebody is going through depression right now. Heavenly Father, we have a lot dealing with mental illness right now. But Heavenly Father, we invite you into this service right now. For Heavenly Father, for the next 45 minutes, for an hour, we bring all our cares to you. Because we know that you're the one to bring the cares to. For Heavenly Father, we come praying for the ministry of this church. Heavenly Father, bless each ministry that we may continue to grow and serve your people. For Heavenly Father, we come praying right now for the deacon ministry. For Heavenly Father, we come praying right now for our new leader, Deacon Bethay. Heavenly Father, continue to guide, lead, and direct him. For we may serve your people. For Heavenly Father, we thank you and we love you. For Heavenly Father, we thank you and we love you. Heavenly Father, we come praying for COVID-19 pandemic. For Heavenly Father, we want to ask you to place on each individual heart who haven't had the vaccine. For Heavenly Father, allow them to go get vaccinated so we may live in a more peaceful world. For Heavenly Father, we know that you can do it because Heavenly Father, you have did it before. Heavenly Father, we thank you. And again, we thank you for all that you do. For Heavenly Father, we come right now asking you to bless the sick. Heavenly Father, bless the bereaved family. For Heavenly Father, we are dealing with a lot of death. For Heavenly Father, a lot of individuals are dealing with the separation of a loved one. Heavenly Father, speak to their heart. Let them know that you are still here and that you are still God. For Heavenly Father, we thank you again for our leader, the Reverend Dr. Charles B. Jackson, Sr. As he celebrates another year of an anniversary of being our pastor. For Heavenly Father, keep his mind sharp. Heavenly Father, as he preach and divide your holy word. Heavenly Father, continue to bless him and his family. Heavenly Father, he stand tall every time he get up behind the pulpit and divide your word. Give him strength, God, because we know he needs you. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. And Heavenly Father, for those who are watching by Zoom, bless them in a special way. For Heavenly Father, we come right now thanking you for all that you do. We don't come for a long prayer, but Heavenly Father, we come for a prayer of sincerity. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. And Heavenly Father, when the time comes where we on this side, where we can't pray no more, where we can't say no more, we want to hear your warm voice say, well done. Well done, thou good and faithful servant, that thou have been faithful over a few things. Come high, and I'll make you rule up any more. In the precious name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Amen.
wonderworking power in the blood of the Lamb. Good morning, Brooklyn. God is good and he is worthy to be praised. Amen. Uh, well, bless the Lord at all times. His praises shall continually be in my mouth. Brooklyn, let us put our hands together and bless the Lord for our pastor, Dr. Charles B. Jackson Sr. as we celebrate 51 years of uninterrupted service of pastoral ministry. We thank God for you today. Ah, and as we give in God the praise, let us reflect on our pastor's heart. Amen. Just to give you a little bit of history, our pastor was installed as pastor of Brooklyn on the first Sunday in February in 1971. That's February the 7th, 1971. Last year, we had an awesome time observing his 50th anniversary in October. We did so simply because of the pandemic. But here we are today, celebrating 51 years. Hallelujah, God is good. Now, one of the things that I can appreciate about our pastor, and I'm sure that you can too, he doesn't ask for a lot. As a matter of fact, in 1984, he asked of us not to have an anniversary celebration each year, but instead, this humble servant asked three things of the Brooklyn family. The first, that we love one another and work together in the spirit of family. My God, what a request. The second thing is that we support the vision that God has given his people for Brooklyn Baptist Church. And just in case you need to be reminded of the vision, that is to proclaim the gospel of Jesus Christ through evangelism, through education and economic empowerment. And the third thing, he humbly asked that we pray for him. My God, Pastor Jackson, we certainly honor you. The word of God tells us that we are to give honor where honor is due, amen? But even if I never read that word because of the life that you live, my God, I would honor you, hallelujah. And I know that Brooklyn family would honor you, amen? Now, I like numbers, and I know Pastor Jackson likes numbers, so Pastor, this is for you. Now, when we think about how many times you've served, well, let's think about this. From February 7th, 1971, that's been 611 months of praying, preaching, teaching, and lifting others. If we wanted to count that in days, that's 18,627 days of praying. Now, if you want to go a little bit further and count the hours, that's 447,000 3,126 million hours. My God. If you want to count this in minutes, as 26,821,896 minutes. And if you want to go down to the second, that's 1,609,313,791 seconds of praising God, of lifting his word, of seeking God for a vision for his people, of loving his his family, of loving God's people, hallelujah, breaking barriers where no man has gone before. God, we thank you that you have given us a pastor according to your heart. We thank you for our pastor, Pastor Jackson. And you know what? I love that we hear his heart. He said it last Sunday. He said, if I can help somebody as I pass along, if I can cheer somebody with a word or song, if I can show somebody that his traveling is wrong, then his living shall not be in vain. And that second verse says, if I can do my duty as a good man ought, and you have, my God, if I can bring back beauty to a world of rot, and you have, my God, if I can spread love's message as the master taught, and you have, my God, then my living shall not be in vain. Let's give our God another hand clap for our pastor, Dr. Charles B. Jackson, Sr. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. 
Well, Brooklyn, what time is it? It is offering time in the house of the Lord. What an awesome opportunity that God has given us to worship him through the giving of our tithes and our offering. Now, there are five ways that you can give. You may give online at www.brooklandbaptist.org. You may text to give at 803-338-7519. You may also mail your gift in to P.O. Box 2093, Columbia, South Carolina, 29202. Or you may drop your gifts off at the Brookland Credit Union. Or you may download the Shelby app on your mobile phones and give that way. And of course, for those of you who are present, we invite you to worship us by giving of your tithe and your offering by dropping them in the appointed offering box. Amen. Let us pray. Most gracious and heavenly Father, we lift up our hearts, our cheerful hearts to you at this moment, and we say thank you. Thank you for giving us a pastor according to your heart who taught us and continually teaches us about tithes and offering. Thank you, Lord God, for those who are giving and those who continue to give. We thank you, Lord God, that we know that your promises are yes and in you. Amen. Promises, Lord God, to open the windows of heaven and pour us out a blessing that we would not even have room enough to receive. Promises that you will rebuke the devourer for our name's sake. I thank you Lord God, that as we give up today's tithes and offerings, that you will disperse your angels that excel in strength and protect our homes, protect our finances, protect our children. The devourer is rebuked in the name of Jesus. We stand ready, willing, and in love to do your will, Lord God. And once again, thank you, Lord God, for the vision that you set in this house, Lord, and that is to proclaim the gospel of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah, through evangelism, education, and economic empowering. In Jesus' name we pray, amen and amen. Hallelujah. Listen, 1 Timothy admonishes us. He says, know those who labor among you and to esteem them highly for their work's sake. But the Bible says especially... The one who delivers the word, the Bible says that he is due of double honor. How many of you all know that you have an anointed pastor who's worthy of double honor this morning, man of God? We honor you this morning, Pastor. We thank God for the first family and for all of the saints that are here. But truly, the Lord is worthy of all of the praise. For, you know, Dr. Jackson, I came in here over 20 years ago and I sang a song that said, The presence of the Lord is here. It was 20 years ago. That was the first time I stepped in here. And I'm just so grateful to God to be back and to be a part of this wonderful celebration as we celebrate this great man of God. There's a song just talks about you are. He is everything we stand in need of. We're going to sing that song this morning just to let God know our confidence and our trust is in him that you are God. Hallelujah. To the Lamb who sits upon the throne, sovereign God, hallelujah. Listen, Brooklyn. You are the Lamb of God. Thank you, Jesus. The Lion of Judah. A mighty strong tower. Yes, you are. You are an awesome wonder. In you we stand triumph. We walk in victory, yes we do, the power of your word, Jesus. Listen y'all, it brings life to me, my redeemer, you are. my defender, you are. my way maker, you are. Lord forever you are my deliverer, great deliverer, Lord Jesus. Yes, you are. Come on, sing it. You're the Lion of Judah. The Lion of Judah. Come on, tell them. A mighty strong tower. A mighty strong tower. That's what you are this morning. Come on, say, you are an awesome. You are an awesome. Hey, in you we stand. Anybody know that you're triumphing in him this morning? We walk in victory. Walk in victory. And listen, the power of your word, Jesus. 
You know what it does? It springs life to me. Come on, sing it. Sing it. My redeemer, my defender, my way maker, Jesus. Lord, forever you are my deliverer. Great deliverer, Lord. What you are. blessings flow as I ascend the sacred desk I would have us as believers reminded 
that the joy of the Lord is ours. Good morning. We thank um, Brother Byron Cage, National Recording Artist, for making Brooklyn a stop by place, sharing his song service with us on this Lord's Day of Worship. Reverend Cartlidge, thank you so much for the prayer. We bless your name. I uh, want to thank um, Dr. Jackie Jones Brown for the acknowledgement of our 51 years. I would want to think that primarily to the favor of God at Brooklyn Church has been your respect for and honor of what we asked of you in 1984. I, I thought that because of what God wanted to do through his people at the Brooklyn Church that it would serve us so much better if we were to do three things in lieu of a anniversary program each year where we dress up on Friday nights for a banquet and then an afternoon program the following Sunday. And I asked if you would just to love, if you would just love one another and work together as a family of God's people, that you would respect and support the vision that God gives for his people and that by all means you would pray for us. And over the years you've done just that. And I want to think that's why God is honoring us in the manner in which he has. So you said thank you to me. I want to ask you to put your hands together. Let's praise God for what he has done. Thank you so very kindly. Let's look at this word that God has given us from the gospel of Luke, chapter 19, verse number 10. Luke's gospel, chapter 19, verse 10. It reads, for the son of man is come to seek and to save that which was lost. For the son of man is come to seek and to save that which was lost. I want to try to preach from the subject. The Savior is looking for you. The Savior is looking for you. The 19th chapter of the Gospel of Luke opens with the conversion of Zacchaeus. Zacchaeus was a hated and despised tax collector. The chief of sinners who had stolen money from many who lived in their community. He exploited their ignorance, took advantage of the poor, and stole from others, thus becoming a wealthy man. However, while enjoying the comforts and conveniences of his wealth, luxurious and extravagant living, he one day discovered that there was something within an emptiness and a void that could not be filled by money, his status, power, or influence he may have had among others. Money is good, and we would that you earn all the money you can earn. In fact, it is the will of God, according to 3 John, verse 2, that we might prosper and be in good health. It is the will of God that we earn money and we become wealthy. In fact, the Brooklyn ministry encourages us toward financial success. Over 20 years ago, God gave us the vision for the credit union that we might become successful financially. One of the things that uh, we uh, would have served reminder upon us that 
The word of God teaches us about building wealth. It says in Proverbs chapter 13 and 22, a good man leaves an inheritance for his children and his children's children. And you can't leave an inheritance to pass on to succeeding generations unless you're earning some money. We need to learn more about generational wealth so we don't have to wonder what our children are going to inherit upon us leaving planet level. So we encourage financial success. But I want to remind you that money is not a cure-all. Money cannot satisfy the longing of the soul. God created us in such a way that there is a longing of the soul to be in spiritual communion with him. Genesis chapter 2 verse 7 says, And he breathed into man's nostrils the breath of life. And man became a living soul. And so this living soul seeks to be in communion, in sweet fellowship with who our Father God is, the creator of this universe. Well, Zacchaeus discovered that he had wealth. He had the respect of many in the neighborhood. He was held in high esteem by community leaders. But at the same time, he was empty and unfulfilled on the inside. But he heard about Jesus. That which he heard about Jesus was intriguing and attractive. Waymaker. <laughs> Miracle worker. Promise keeper. A light in darkness. And so Zacchaeus says, I want to meet Jesus for myself. He learned that Jesus would be passing through town, and so he closed up his lucrative tax collecting business and made his way to the location where Jesus was. When he arrived to where Jesus was, the crowd was so large, and because he was of small stature, somewhere about five feet, two inches tall, he could not get to Jesus. However, he knew the direction uh, uh, that the, the, the movement was going and where Jesus would be traveling. And so he ran ahead of the crowd, uh, climbed up into a sycamore tree, sat on one of the tree branches and waited for Jesus to pass by. And when Jesus got to where Zacchaeus was, he looked up and saw Zacchaeus and he called him by his name, Zacchaeus, make haste. And come down. I want to go and spend some time with you in your home. Zacchaeus came down. Jesus went with him to his home. And the Bible says that Zacchaeus and his whole household were converted. Zacchaeus said to the Lord, said, Lord, I, I, I accept you as Jesus the Christ. And, 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 and I, I promise to return fourfold to everyone from whom I have stolen. And then Jesus said something in verse number 9 of that 19th chapter. He said to Zacchaeus and his family, This day, today is salvation come to your house. Glory. And then he goes on in verse number 10, and he announces his mission. He gives what you would call a mission statement. He said, For the Son of Man, is come to seek and to save that which was lost. I think that mission statement is worthy of investigation. Let's open up this mission statement to hear what Jesus says about his coming. He begins by saying, son of man. Son of man was, it seemed to have been Jesus' favorite self-description. Many called him son of God. Messiah, the Christ, the immaculate Lamb of God, the King of the Jews, 
the Holy One of Israel, but Jesus referred more often than not to himself as Son of Man. Are you all prepared with me? Son of Man denotes the manifestation of divinity in humanity. Son of Man is a divine the divinity living in a tenant of clay. Son of Man denotes the word of God becoming flesh, dwelling among us in grace and truth. Son of Man has to do with divinity living within the confines of humanity. Jesus wanted us to know when he said Son of Man that he was fully man and fully God, fully God and fully man, just as much man as he was God and just as much God as he was man, son of man. For us to understand Jesus' favorite self-description is to bring us happiness. I'm happy to report to you that because Jesus referred to himself as son of man, we would know that he is touched by our infirmities. He wanted us to know that he was son of man, uh, that we might know that he understands the human predicament. He knows what we have to go through. He himself was despised and rejected a man. He was acquainted with sorrow. He was a person of grief. He knows what it is to hunger. He knows what it is to become thirsty. His compassion for us is sensitive to the least of these because he was son of man. He knows what it is to weep and cry when a loved one dies because he wept at the grave of his friend Lazarus. Son of man. Are you praying me here today? Son of man says that he knows all about our struggles. He knows when people lie on us what it means. He knows how it feels to have people lie about us and lie to us and to backstab and to betray him as Judas did. He knows all about whatever it is we find ourselves going through. So he says, the son of man. He identifies with us. He is the supreme sympathizer and he is the unequal empathizer, son of man. Statement goes on to say, son of man is. Note, if you will, the inactive to be verb is. Is. Is is suggestive of existentialism, which has reference to the existence of personality. The son of man is. In other words, Jesus is real. <laughs> Glory, hallelujah. He's not the figment of one's imagination. Jesus is real. He's just not the historical figure uh, in, 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 in time. Jesus is real. He's not just uh, the product of some conjured up dream. Jesus is real. I'm glad to tell you that I know that Jesus is real. He's just as real as he was when Nebuchadnezzar saw him in the burning fiery furnace with Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego and said to his servants, Behold, I see four men loose, and the fourth one looks like the Son of God. He's just as real as it was when the apostle John was exiled on the Isle of Patmos. And God slowly pulled back the drapers of heaven and gave him a glimpse of glory divine. And John said, I saw one whose hair was like lamb's wool. Feet were like polished brass. Eyes were like uh, the thunder. Eyes were like flames of fire. The son of man is real. I'm here to tell you today that Jesus is real. He was real and he is real. And whatever he was, he still is. And whatever he is, he shall always be. Jesus is real. Songwriter, you just say real, real. Jesus is real to me. So many people doubt him, but I can't live without him. That's why I love him so, because Jesus is real to me. Jesus is son of man is. The mission statement goes on saying, the son of man is come. 
thank God Almighty, he came to us, we should have been going to him. We are the one who strayed. We erred. We drifted away from him. We inclined to do wrong, prone to error, make mistakes. We should have been going to him. But thank God Almighty, he came to us when we had no inclination to go to him. Thank God Almighty, he came to us. And then this psalm points out very, very, I mean, this mission statement points out very clearly why he came. Right there in the text. It, it, it can leap from the printed page of the text. You can see it very clearly for yourself. Three reasons given why he came. First of all, he came to save. I mean, to seek. The Son of Man came to seek. To seek implies intention and purpose. When we seek, we diligently search after. No stones unturned. We seek. Now, let me see if I can give some clarity on the seeking of our Savior. We who are flesh and blood, watch this, do not naturally seek God. We, creatures of the dust, have no real desire, God, help me, Lord, to seek God. Psalm 51 and 5, David says, Behold, I was born in sin. I was shapen in iniquity. And so in my birth and in this flesh and blood is not the will to seek God for our salvation. Without God, there is an emptiness within us. If God is not first and foremost in your life, there is a void on the inside. Go ahead. Yeah. But because of our carnal nature, that void cannot seek God and is there. And what we try to do oft times is fill that void. Oh, God have mercy. We try to fill that emptiness with material things. Yeah, money. Yeah, 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 yeah. Position, yes, a political cloud influence, fill in the void. Some folk have that void and they try to fill it with drugs, alcohol, promiscuity, trying to fill the void. Got a void within us. Are you praying here now? We try to fill that void in love relationships. In romantic relationships, thinking that a man can fill that void, or a woman can fill that void that within you. So we look for love all in the wrong places. Because we're trying to fill a void, are y'all pretty now? Within us. Because somehow we believe that we can just fill that void with things. I'm here to report to you from the mission statement of Jesus Christ that that void cannot be filled apart from who God is. And so if you're seeking to fill the void, you don't have to seek for God. Are you praying now? God is seeking for you. You don't have to look for God. God is not lost. God is already looking for you. Can I show it to you? Romans chapter 3, verses 10 and 11 says, there is no one righteous, not even one. No one understands. No one seeks God. Because in our carnal nature, we cannot seek salvation in God. <laughs> Look at the history of the don't, if you don't mind. Adam and Eve. Adam and Eve sinned in the garden. They did not seek God. God came looking for them. Where are you, Adam? The history of salvation is not man seeking God, but God seeking man. God sought Abraham. Said to Abraham, I want you to make your way to a land that I will show you. 
The word says, by faith, Abraham started out on a journey from his native land looking for a city whose builder and maker is God. Abraham didn't see God. God sought Abraham. Jacob did not seek God. Jacob was on the run. But God met up with Jacob at El Bethel in a dream, changed his name from Jacob to Israel. He became the father of the 12 tribes of Israel. Jacob did not seek God. God sought Jacob. Moses did not seek God. Moses was tending the sheep. And he looked in the distance and he saw a bush burning that defied the law of consumption. And he made his way to the bush, wanted to know why it was, being, was, it was burning yet not being consumed. And he heard the voice out of the bush saying, Moses, draw not now hither. Put thy shoes from off thy feet for the ground you're standing on is holy ground. We don't seek God. God seeks us. Oh, help me, Holy Ghost here. God seeks us. So can I help you understand what is meant when we say, I'm seeking God? When we say, I'm seeking God, God, what we're saying to God, God, I, 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 I want to draw closer to you. When you say, I'm seeking God, you are saying to God, God, I want to love you with all my heart. All my mind, all my soul, all my strength. I want to live in obedience to the truth of your word. I want to follow the commands. I want to live and follow him who's the way, the truth, and the life. That's how we seek God to draw closer to God. He seeks us. Revelation chapter 3 verse 20 underscores it. Jesus says, behold, I stay at the door <laughs> and knock. Anyone who opens the door, I'll come in and sup with him and she can sup with me. You don't have to seek God. God is not lost. How can you look? Why you got to look for somebody who's not lost? He's not to be, he's, he can be found because he's everywhere. All at the same time, and no place is he anywhere, and he's not at the same time. He is not lost. You know, we like to say sometimes, I found the Lord. Can I tell you what you're really saying? You've heard people say that a whole lot, haven't you? I found the Lord. I found the Lord. It's like our elders used to sing a song, I cried, and I cried. I cried all night long. My soul couldn't rest content until I found the Lord. The only reason you can say that you found him is because he was already looking for you. Jesus makes it clear in his mission statement that I have come to seek. Not only does he say he came to seek, but the son of man came to save. <laughs> He came to save us. Now, because of our sins, he could have come in a fiery chariot to crush us. Because of our sinful nature and how disobedient we were, he could have come to sweep us into oblivion. He could have come to vent judgment on us. He could have come to destroy us, but he did not. He came to save us. He came to redeem us. He came to forgive us. He came to give us hope. He came to bring us joy. He came uh, that we might have meaning in life. He came to show us our purpose for living. He came to us. Came to save us. All things pass away. All things become new. Now, I might have a couple of witnesses in here who know what it means to be saved. The things you used to do, you just don't take pleasure in doing them anymore because you're saved. Some of the places you used to go, 
and used to enjoy hanging out, all of a sudden you don't have a taste for it anymore. Save. Now this is the one that kind of challenges us because some of the folk you used to hang out with, you call them friends, but they were just associates. <laughs> some of those folk you just no longer find yourself wanting to hang out with anymore because your conversation has changed. The things you used to do with them, you don't have no joy in doing them anymore. you got some new friends in my beloved Lord Jesus Christ. You've got to understand that once you are saved, there's some folk, you got to love them from a distance. You can't keep them in your bosom anymore. They can't go everywhere you go because y'all are moving in different directions. And don't you feel guilty if you begin to get busy because you don't have time for the kind of stuff that they lack and joy doing because you are saved. I, I used to love to hear Trusty Emeritus, Carolyn Page, sing the song, New Life. I moved from an old house. I moved from my old friends. I moved from my old way of strife because I moved out to a brand new life. He changed my old way with words. He changed my old leveled mind. He changed my heart and gave me a new heart because I moved out to a new life. Can't you see? I'm a new man. Don't you know? I got a new land name and one day I live in that new land because I moved out into a brand new life when we are saved we have a brand new life and I'm here to tell you today that he is a wonderful savior he is a heart changing savior he is a spirit filling savior he is a thirst quenching savior he is a soul reviving savior and I thank God I'm saved today and can I take just 35 seconds uh, to give you a testimony in song uh, storm clouds me right strong winds may blow but I'll tell the world wherever I go that I found a savior and he's sweet I know thank God almighty I'm saved because the son of man came to save right in the text the son of man came to seek the son of man came to save and the son of man came for the lost is right there. You see, the Savior did not come for the righteous. He did not come for the goody two shoes. He didn't come for those who stood around on their high, super pious pedals, thinking that they're better than anybody else. He didn't come for the morally clean or the ethically right. He did not come for those who adhered to the strict Mosaic law or were governed by the Deuteronomy code. Can I tell you why he came? He came for the lost. Now, to be lost is for us to not have a personal relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ. Lost. Lost is to not know him in the free pardoning of our sins. To be lost is to try and get along in this world without Jesus Christ. I, I don't know if it's growing in age, but Deacon Ben Sultan, I can't understand for the life of me how somebody is trying to deal with all of the stuff that's going on in this world today without Jesus Christ. I can't understand anyone who says they love their children 
and they want the best for their children. They want healthy and happy children. They want successful children, but not introduce those children to Jesus Christ. Lost. Jesus came for the lost. Glory, hallelujah. Jesus came that we might have a better life, that we might live abundantly in him. Lost. And that is the true mission of the church. The true mission of the church. I said when I make reference during the offertory appeal, first of all, is to win souls for Christ. Yeah, we want to transform lives and we want to make a difference in the community, but first, we want to win souls for Christ. The mission statement of Brooklyn, proclaiming the gospel of Jesus Christ through evangelism, education, economic empowerment. Education is good, it's important. Economic empowerment, empowerment is important. But our first call of God is evangelism. We got to win souls for Christ. That's why just as soon as this pandemic is over, just as soon as the numbers get better, our evangelistic team under the leadership of co directors, uh, Reverend Bernard Davis and Reverend Santa Reese Bay, they've already planned to have a tent revival. March 28th, 29th, and 30th uh, on that old football field at the former Lakeview School. Uh, we're going to compel people to come to Jesus Christ. Uh, we can't just come to our churches and sit and wait on folk to come and join us in worship. We got to go into the hedges and the highways. And the Bible says compel them to come to Jesus Christ because Jesus came for the lost. <laughs> Glory, hallelujah. Jesus came for the lost. That is our responsibility as believers in Jesus Christ to seek the salvation of our kindreds and acquaintances. That is our obligation as the children of God to win souls for Christ. A saved neighbor is a, a safe neighbor. We've got to seek the salvation of those whom we love beginning at home with our family. Reaching out to our relatives, our co-workers, we've got to pray for their salvation. Jesus came to seek and to save those who are lost. Are you praying with me here now? We've got to have number one in our spirits, uh, lost souls. Man was lost to holiness. Man was lost to happiness. A man was lost to heaven, uh, but thank God Jesus came uh, that we might live holy, that we might know happiness, that we might have heaven at the end of this life. Uh, yes, he came for the lost. Now, there's one thing, only one thing that's worse than being lost, and that is for someone to be lost and no one is looking for them. But thank God Almighty, the Savior came to look for us, those who were lost in their sins. The old folk used to sing a song from the black hymn of, I heard the voice of Jesus sing, come unto me and rest. Lay down, thy weary one lay down, thy head upon thy breast. I came to Jesus as I was uh, wearied uh, and worn and sad, uh, I found in him uh, a resting place, and he has made me glad. Uh, I heard uh, the voice of Jesus say, uh, Behold, I freely give uh, living water, uh, thirsty one, uh, stoop down and drink and live. Uh, and I came to Jesus uh, as I was, uh, and I drank uh, of that life-giving stream. Uh, my thirst was quenched, uh, my soul revived, uh, and now uh, I live in him right now I'm saved right now 
I've been born again right now. I'm wrapped and tied in Jesus right now. I know him and he knows me right now. Are you saved today? Do you know Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior? Have you been born again? Have you been born again? Do you know Jesus? He's looking for you. He's looking for you. He's looking for you. He came to seek, to save all who are lost. He's looking for you today. And if you have not a personal relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ, pray right now the sinner's prayer. It's given to us different variations, but it's always the same. Lord, I acknowledge myself as a sinner. I confess my sins. I believe that Jesus is the Son of God. I believe that he died for my sins. And he was raised on the third day morning. And I ask you, God, to come into my heart. I want to live for you. If you pray that prayer and mean it from your heart, you are saved. Come into my heart. Come into my heart. I want to live for you. Oh, that sounds so good. Roosevelt Howard, that sounds so good. Come on. Okay, Minister John. Let God use you. Let God use you. Let God use you.
softly, I would invite you to Jesus today. You don't have to seek salvation in God. You seek to draw closer to God. God is already looking for you. He came seeking you. He's knocking right now. And I got the feeling that he's knocking on someone's heart right now and saying, come down the aisle. I don't know who, I don't know who. But, but he's speaking to someone right now. Maybe you in the viewing audience. You need to call that number right now, 803-744-7941, 803-744-7941, because he's seeking somebody right now. And he says, don't tarry. I want to give you salvation. Will you come? I'm going to tarry for just a minute. I'm going to tarry for just a minute. Will you come today? You don't make it and go through all the stuff that we have to go through without you. Oh, somebody's coming. Somebody, somebody's feeling it. Somebody's feeling it. is looking for you for the son of man is come to seek and to save those who are lost seek that's intentional you matter to him is what it means you matter to God he wants you to enjoy life on another level you matter to him to bring your salvation. That does not mean that you're going to be perfect. It simply means you're forgiven. Somebody missed that. That's all it means. Salvation means you're not perfect, but you are forgiven. And you seek to draw closer to how many of you know that the closer you get to God, the sweeter he becomes to you? That's when, that's when all the chains start falling off. The closer you get to God, the more the chains fall off. We want to pray for you today. Let's bow our heads in prayer as we also prepare for the Lord's Supper. God, our Father, we thank you for this word on evangelism. Thank you for your mission statement. Thank you for referring to who you are as son of man. One who can identify with us. Empathize with us in our hurt and our pain, our sorrow, our grief. Knows all about our struggles. Thank you for being son of man, a 
among the other designations refer to you. Thank you for being son of man. Thank you for seeking us. We who did you wrong. You came looking for us. And you're looking for us right now. And we thank you for it, God. Thank you for saving us. We bless your name for our salvation and for what it means to us every day of our lives. We bless your name, Lord. Bless your name. God, we have some family members, relatives, friends, associates, colleagues, co-workers who are not saved, who are lost. And you reminded us in your word today the only thing worse than being lost is having no one to look for us. So let them know, God, that you're looking for, for them right now. And we pray for their salvation. In the name of Jesus Christ, we pray for their salvation right now. And now, Lord, we who are saved, we who are your sons and your daughters, come before this hour of Holy Communion, the supper that you've given us in remembrance of your life and your crucifixion, your death, your burial, and your resurrection. And as we partake of bread of your broken body and the wine of your shed blood we do so God in remembrance of you with expectations to God of that day when you will gather your church together and we'll be raptured to live eternity live eternally in the heavens on high bless us now as we shall eat and drink together as members of the body of Christ in Jesus name we pray Amen. Oh, that music sounds so good there. Keep playing that softly. You have your prepackaged communion before you. Be careful as you lift that top part of it. Woo! There's a sweet, sweet spirit in this place. Brother Byron Cage, I know you, you're busy, you might be in a hurry, but after we give the benediction as people are slowly moving out, is there, you, is there one little more piece of song, a little something small, a little something, something you can sing for us? Whew. That's not how the story ends. Three days later, he rose again. That's Say that one more time, though. That's not how the story Three days later, he rose again. That's how. That's how. On the night Jesus was betrayed, he took bread and he broke it, saying, This is my body, which is broken for you. Take and eat in remembrance of me. After having done so, he took the cup and said, this cup is the New Testament in my, drip, in my blood. Drink ye of it for the remission of your sins in remembrance of me. All right, switch it over to one of my favorite ones now. Ready, ready to go, Rosebell? All right. It reaches to the highest mountain.
bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face shine upon you, be gracious unto you. May the Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace and prosperity now and always. party everybody's gone but those who still stay how many of y'all you, you believe you still got a blessing yeah. if you don't get it right now how many y'all yeah. believe that yeah. listen can't you see him working on the outside i can feel him moving on the inside so come and enter in cast your cares on him he'll open up windows and pull you out of blessing for when god steps in he gives you what you need healing power and victory say but it's all
mission. Right.